Good morning. Our new sign has been delivered and installed. If you have not noticed, you should take a look. The prayer team is still meeting at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays. We invite your concerns. We invite your concerns. We invite your concerns. Did I say that? See the yellow cards in uh, pews behind you. Um, Choir practice, a warm and inclusive event, welcomes all interested members every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Bible study, season three of The Chosen. If you, have, has anybody seen any of that? It's beautiful. It's just so well written and shot and acted. I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> meaningful? I, did, I left out meaningful. The men's breakfast will be on next Sunday, at October 13th at 8 p.m. The success of the pump pumpkin patch depends on your valuable time and effort. We urgently need volunteers. Your help will be greatly appreciated. Please sign up using the sheet located in the narthex, a.k.a. lobby. The food pantry will be open Wednesday, October 9th from 2 to 3 p.m. Donations for this ministry would be greatly appreciated. A blood drive will be at Percy Hall on Thursday, October 10, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. The church will be feeding the Lindsay Band on Friday, October 11. If you want to volunteer, donate time or food, or make a monetary donation, please get in touch with Barbara Thomas back yonder. There will be a life screening, uh, sorry, a lifeline screening in Percy Hall on Monday, October 14, from, 18, from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. If you would like more information, contact Melissa in the church office. The church will feed the Lindsay High School football team on Friday, October 25th. If you want to volunteer, donate time or food, or make a mon monetary donation. Please sit. This sounds familiar. Barbara Thomas. As always, we need worship servant volunteers. If you want to help as a worship servant, please sign up on the clipboard located in the narthex. And now for something completely different. Next. File, please. Mm -hmm. Some lying, some stealing, and some acts of kindness here and there. I tried to live a good life. Well, let's see how good. lot of bad things. Yes, I see. But I've done good things too, you know, to offset the bad things. Like one time I cheated on a test, but then I cleaned up trash in the park. Mm-hmm. That should balance out, right? Let's find out. This way. That should have balanced out, right? It should have balanced out. Next. Bio, please. Oh, yeah. I devoted my entire life to making this world a better place. I dug wells in Africa. I donated blood every month. And I ran an orphanage in India. I mean, I just wish I could have done more. Mm-hmm. And is this your subscription? I only read the articles. I, I only read the articles. I only read the articles. Next. My mom goes to church. I was baptized as a baby? Take American Express, right? Next. File, please. 
Whoa. Somebody's been busy. Well, let's get this over with. Sorry, um, I didn't know he was with you. Okay, step on the scale. Not you. Him. Hey, wait a minute. That is totally not fair. That's why it's called Grace. Next. The famous, as a famous, as a comedian would say, there's your sign um, on that this morning. I want to just quickly add to our announcements that in a few weeks we have our charge conference that's our annual business meeting of the church and so be expecting and looking for things coming out this week as we prepare to make those final uh, determinations and we have a, a ab administrative board meeting on the third Sunday which will finalize everything that we need to have for uh, that charge conference we got a little of a reprieve this month we did not have an administrative council meeting month. So as we proceed with worship, welcome and let's stand together and we'll sing Days of Elijah. It's number 3186 in the green book. These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of and these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord, behold he comes, Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, so lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in the world. And we are your laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. Now that should have got your blood going. So now let's sing number 405, Seek Ye First in the hymn. Door 
shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. If you would join with me in the call to worship this morning, found in your bulletin. Come, all who look for God with unseeing eyes. Come, all who listen for God but hear nothing. Oh, that we knew where to find God. We want to hear and understand God's Word. The Word of God is living and active. It pierces and judges and opens us to God's grace. We cannot hide from God who knows us. God understands our thoughts and intentions. Leave everything to follow Jesus in this hour. This is the time to embrace new ways. Here we set the patterns for everyday life. Here we are strengthened for every day's challenges. We seek to gather as children of your realm, reigning God. This is the time and place of your dominion. We recognize that you, not we, prescribe the rules under which we love life can be rich and full and free. Help us in this hour to embrace the best we know. Open our thoughts and feelings so we may learn better ways. We approach you with boldness, daring to question and make requests, knowing that your grace and mercy exceed our wildest imaginings and your guidance is ever available to those who ask. And if you'll turn to page 881 in the hymnal or also on the screen, let's share together in the Apostles' Creed. This ancient text ties us together to the very early days of our Christian faith and connects us with all Christians of all denominations around the world. Let us share it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, conceived was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. seated. Our hymn of prayer this morning is Trust and Obey. We'll sing the first verse, and then as the music continues, I invite you to be in silent prayer and meditation.
Lord God, bringer of life, creator of all this world, giver of grace, salvation, and love. We come to you this morning with our hearts filled with confusion and uncertainty, worries about tomorrow, questions about the directions and the paths. We lift up to you this morning all the things that each of us hold on our hearts. We lift up to you this morning the people in the states of Georgia and Carolina and Florida, West Virginia, Tennessee, that are impacted by the hurricane and all the horrific flooding. We ask that you save all the lives possible and find rescuers for all the lost and give hope to all those who struggle. We lift up to you the world that seems to be edging us so closer to greater war and ask that you offer peace and wisdom to the leaders of this world. When we cannot always find the things to say, the words to express our feelings, let us remember that prayer that your son taught us as we say it now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward to gather our tithes and offerings. Please stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
where children belong, welcomed as part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread and cup, prayer and song. This is where children belong. You know that one of the themes of our day is to talk about signs. You guys know what signs are? Think you do? Well, I'm going to pull one up and see if you can tell me what this sign is. Stop. Stop. What does that mean, to stop? Okay, say that again for me. So if we're driving a car and I come up and I see one of those signs, what should I do? Hit the brakes, right? Come to, come to a stop. Okay. And then when it's safe, I can go forward. All right, here's another sign. What's, what's this sign say? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. It means children or parents walking. Children or parents, yeah. That's crossing, people crossing, right? Yeah. Right, and what should we do if we're driving a car and we see that? We should stop. We should stop or slow, make sure that there's nobody else there. What if you're the person walking, what should you do when you see it? Across. You should look both ways. Yeah, absolutely. You actually want to go and look for those markings on the road and cross, because you know it should be safer. Here's another sign. No smoking, that's a good one. It's okay if somebody wants to smoke, that's their choice, but we know it's not good for the health of many other people, right? So no smoking. Here's one. No parking, no stopping. Yeah, no parking or no stopping. That's great, you guys are doing good. You're ready to start driving before long, aren't you? <laughs> Gotta know those rules, and it's important. Signs are everywhere, but can you look around the church and everyone? Look around, what signs do you see that maybe tell you about God? Uh, we can feel his presence around us. Okay, that's great, you can feel it, that's a great sign. What other signs, can you, you see hear about signs? It. You hear about it. Let's say again? You hear about it. Hear about it, okay. Look around, do you, you see talk any about other it. signs? There's like pictures and you see names There's about pictures? it. There's pictures, you're right. Like way back in the glass we see that a symbol or a sign that kind of says to us that Christ and the Holy Spirit is here the cross, with us. The cross. And the cross, right, isn't that? This beautiful cross back here tells us again that we're in a place where Christ is present. The but food. The food, like, like the bread. You're right, because that was excellent. We're going to have Holy Communion, and this is World Communion Sunday, and so that bread says to us that Christ is present. And the cup and the juice says he's part of us, and he wants us to be with him. And wherever we encounter that, we know Christ is with us. And these are the signs we can see. If we look all around the world, we can see these kinds of signs that tell us and remind us that Christ is here. The things that we do, the signs that we see from others, from buildings and things of that nature. That's, that's important, to look around and realize God's with us everywhere. All of the world is his sign of his love and care. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Well, let's say a prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks to have these children here present with us. We give thanks for all that you have bestowed upon this church and the people here at Lindsay and the world around us. And we ask that you continue to inspire and encourage us to grow closer to you and to seek you above all others. In the name of your son, we pray. We say, Amen. All right. Welcome to sit mindfully or stand if you're willing and able. Scripture, the plea for justice and declaration, declaration of righteousness of David. 
Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. And I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with the hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all of your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners nor my life with the bloodthirsty, those in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me, be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground in the great congregation, I will bless the Lord.
Let us stand for the reading of the gospel. Mark 10, verses 2 through 16. Some, testing him, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall be one flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples again asked him about this matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, He was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up into his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. You may be seated. For some of you, most of you, you might recall that back in turning the hands of time way back in the 1971, there was a a group called, a musical group called the Five Man Electrical Band. And they came out with a song titled Signs. So to help you appreciate the sense of the song uh, and to recall those times, times about long hair and bell bottoms and pants and jeans and with holes and facial hair, I just uh, have a photo for you to see. This might remind you a few of those times. I don't know how many of you may have at one point or another, resembled some of that dress and attire. I certainly remember having some of that sort of wear and hair. My father was terribly against such things. But the first verse of the song says um, about a young man who's walking down the street and seeking a job. And he sees a help wanted sign. But the sign also says no long-haired freaky people need apply. And so the young man, according to the verse, tucks his hair up under his hat and goes in and applies and gets the job. And then as he takes off the hat to the new employer, he says, imagine that, me with all my hair working for you. I kind of don't resemble those days anymore. (laughs) Although I will tell you, I have some photos of some long hair um, if they're in 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 the family archives. We get used to seeing a lot of signs on a lot of different ways to help us guide ourselves through life. Sometimes the signs can be distracting, and I have another photograph for you. And uh, sometimes it's just hard to figure out which way we're really supposed to go. I remember when Deb and I took a trip into uh, Germany, and we were trying to find our own our way through a number of different villages and hamlets that the signs in Europe are done differently. Here we can really track where we're going to go just by following a, a numeric sign, Highway 76 or, or uh, I-35, such, and go on and go. But in Germany, they are all used to the little towns and the little hamlets. And if you didn't know, and there, or if those little towns were on your tourist map, then, then you could be completely lost, perplexed, unclear, confused. Which road do you take from the center of town? where there could be four or five different roads uh, to travel. Signs can be hard to come to figure our way through. And I, I wanted to share with you uh, 
a few signs that, that I've encountered um, that I thought uh, you might appreciate. Um, and here's one that says, caution, correctional facility area, do not pick up hitchhikers. Another one is, caution, no caution signs for the next 26 miles. Another one says, cruise ships use airport exit. Think about that for a moment. Another one I saw, it says, end of earth, two miles. Okay, end of earth. A few church signs that I have uh, seen over time, here's one that is, uh, love your enemies, it messes with their minds. Or try Jesus for a few weeks, if you don't like it, Satan will gladly take you back. Yeah, that, yeah, there's a little ouch with that one in there. But can you imagine some of these things? Uh, we have our beautiful new sign, by the way, and uh, we have all kinds of creative minds. We'll, we just need to be thinking about some of those. Um, here's one. Uh, <coughs> Is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? And one more for you. Seven days without prayer makes one week. So we can get all kinds of messages when, when we look at signs. And, and of course, you probably all have seen the alligator crossings and, and uh, kangaroo crossings and you name it. They're out there. But I want you to think about this morning. What kind of sign are you? What's the message that comes from you when you're out and about in the day, or when you first get up in the morning, maybe before you've had that first cup of coffee, what's the message that's running across your forehead or that you're conveying? Or maybe what's the message as you're driving down in the city and people cut you off? What sort of messages are you conveying then? And it doesn't have to be spoken words, just your eyes and, and things. So where we know Christ made a point in our text this week to welcome children, what kind of sign are you that says welcome here? That uh, are our signs, are we confused in ourselves and therefore our sign and our messages are confusing to others as well? So contemplate that as we work through the word this morning. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, strengthen us to be faithful disciples of your way. Prepare us through reading and listening to your word to be strong and courageous when we are asking to give witness to you. Overcome our weaknesses and our fears so that when the time comes for us to stand up and be counted, to speak up or to speak out for you, that we will do so faithfully to depart in your name because you courageously and faithfully love us and save us, inspire us, that we might do the same for you in our ordinary lives. And Lord God, I ask that you give meaning and purpose to the words that I share this morning, that they set the hearts of your people on fire. Amen. I want to again say a joy it is for uh, Deb and I to have been here last Sunday and just have been a part of worship with all of you and uh, as we move forward in recovery. And it's joy to be back up here. It was joy to uh, get to start working on, on our messages and things again. And I, uh, I'm grateful for the leadership of this church on how you've carried forward with so many different projects underway, and, uh, and for all of your prayers uh, as we move through this healing process. We still have a little ways to go, but the doctors are very pleased with how everything is, is progressing, and um, I'm pleased with, again, how I'm uh, moving forward as well. Uh, so we look forward to when we can get back to a little bit more standing and uh, uh, more, more walking easily. So for a week or two anyway, I'm going to take advantage of a stool to sit here and uh, uh, to be able to share the word with you this morning.
So there's a wonderful story that I ran across uh, a few years ago about Billy Graham when he was on one of his crusades. This event uh, took place early in, in his ministry, and he was in a small rural community, not all that different than, than Lindsay might be, holding one of his crusades in the great big circus tent on the fairgrounds. The night before, Dr. Graham had written a message and a letter to send to his family. And so that next morning, he had his envelope addressed and the stamp on it and was walking through downtown and trying to figure out where the post office was. He finally encountered a young lad and uh, he asked him the post office. And the young man said, I'll proceed down the, the street a couple of blocks and you'll see where it says uh, the uh, pharmacy drugstore and he said take a left and go two blocks and you'll come to the you come to the post office and so the Billy Graham thanked the young man and began to walk away and then said to the young man by the way I'm, I'm sharing a message tonight uh, under the tent in the fairgrounds at seven would you and your family like to come and join and the young man said well why are you doing such a thing and he says because I want to help people find their way to heaven. And the young boy replied, no, I don't think so. You couldn't even figure out where the post office was. There's your sign, as Bill Engel would say. There's your sign. We need to be able to see and find our way sometimes in our human life, and it's difficult. Well, I also want to share with you this morning a text from Hebrew that's tied in with this. And we'll put the text up on the screen and I will uh, share it with you. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he has also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and it sustains all things by his powerful word. And when he had made perfection for sins, purification for sins, he sat down and at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world but which we are speaking to being angels. But someone has testified somewhere that what are humans that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels and you have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet now and subjecting all things to them God left nothing outside of their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. And for this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Hebrews is a book that's generally considered to be one of Paul's letters and one of his most important writings. He was writing to the Hebrew people, to the people who have Jewish nature, helping him try to understand who this Jesus Christ was and why this 
man named Jesus who was crucified in Jerusalem is so important to them in their life? Why is that this man, why are the things that he did so great? And he really goes to make the point that it's not about the death that is important that we need to focus on, but the realization that his death, his crucifixion was futile. It was futile because he rose triumphantly from the dead and gloriously assures us of God's love for each and every one of us. Through his death, he makes life new. Through his death, he makes salvation possible through God's sacrifice of his son. He tells us exactly how important each of us truly are. Think about this for a minute. God has placed such value on each of us, each one of us, that we need to recognize that value offered through the sacrifice of his son and realize the depth of the forgiveness that God has for us through that gift. Because of what Jesus has done, we are able to stand before God confident that Jesus was sent to save us, to help us rise up and walk forward. The opening video was a comical way of demonstrating the very point and that it doesn't matter when our faith is in Jesus Christ, when we seek and look to him for our salvation, for our forgiveness, that we understand that God, that he steps in place. He has already done the suffering that we may be restored before God, that we may be with God, which is exactly the way God had intended it and intended us to be just slightly below the angels, but above all other things, a desire to be with God in God's home. It begins at our home, really, each, for each of us on our faith journey. It begins in our homes. It begins with our homes that's in our heart. And in God's home, that faith begins, that desire the understanding of the value that we have and the importance that we live begins not only just in God's home, in our home, and then is for us to carry it forward, to show on a public witness just who it is that we live for, who is our brother and sisters. It is our loyalty and our depth that we're called to do to become part of that body of the church, part of the body of Christ, to be those feet and those hands, the ones that not just do work, but also hug and share and love and care, that are there to show compassion for one another. Today's text from Hebrews is powerful words for each of us and offers us within that beautiful language a variety of signs and messages that point us in one direction to God's loving grace and desire and value for each of us. And it's extended to everyone, no matter what mess we may have, the, the ones that we've caused and created, the ones that we've fallen into, we're there to be made clean and be part of with God. Now, our scripture passage from Mark today is a bit of a difficult one. Churches have split, as you know, over such words. People have left churches and gone to others, some by force and some by other means, and been kicked out over some of those words, and they're challenging words. As a pastor, it becomes a little scary and frightful these days to even read that text. I have to admit that there was a moment or two when we're thinking about worship, but should we even talk about this text? And then I begin to think about, no, this text is from Mark is really greater than that. It's not just the words, because 
the Pharisees and the Sadducees were engaged at trying to create controversy and difficulty and confusion. They were looking precisely to find a point to where people would get angry at Jesus, that no matter what side or position he might take, that people would object to one side or the other. They would point to the realities of world life and that their difficulties. And so they were forcing Jesus to have to make a stand. And he stated his position about man and woman for each other. And he also made it clear that such certificates are, made, are laws made for human reality, but not for God. And then, then he turns it to the children. And it's an interesting dynamic, the turn and the shift that he has uh, as he turns us from children. And part of that, they're sitting in the house, and again, the disciples are trying to figure out just what it, Jesus was trying to say and put it into a human set of realities to which there can be laws and rules. And Jesus says to them, see the children. Now in this story, not only is Jesus frustrated with his disciples over their arguing and wanting to continue, but also as the children are trying to come forward, the disciples start becoming guardians Security guards keeping the children away. And the text says Jesus becomes indignant, becomes angry. Some of the other translations use even harsher terms to reflect the level of anger that Jesus had. He says, no, the children are to be allowed to come forward and be brought to me and that the world, the kingdom of God is given to those who receive it like children. And that's a pondering question, really. It can go through all kinds of biblical study books and scholars have written many things about what does it really mean to receive it like children. I mean, do you have to be a child in order to receive the kingdom of God? And if you don't receive it as a child, is it just simply too late? Or does it mean that we have to have the mind and the heart, the openness that we see in children to receive and experience God? Is that the way we receive the kingdom of God? And I think that's exactly the way that Jesus was trying to address the issue. He was trying to get us and his disciples and the people then to realize that despite the difficulty of the overall questions, the bigger picture is to understand what it means to be in relationship with God and to come and receive, to come and draw close, to be near, to be in relationship with God. It isn't the, the arguments and the laws that make it the place. It is that relationship. We need to see and understand what God has intended for us and what God wants us to be in that relationship. And when we put all these other laws and these other rules and let them get in the way, the way of God's love, the way of God's care and compassion, we miss the point. An example could be when we just think about how difficult it is and what happens when we think about the power of, of boiling water. Now, here, most of you probably know uh, what 212 degrees means, right? That's the temperature when water begins to boil. Now, in Denver, by the way, it's 202 degrees, not 212 to get it to boil. So that people get a little hotter, a little faster, or get a little angrier faster. We walk on some of these subject matters like we see in politics and on TV right now, where people are getting so angry over some things so quick, it's so fast. That 211 is a hot, steamy water, but it's not the same as boiling. Boiling adds power and pressure. When we can run steam engines and, and all kinds of things with that power. We, were in, uh, we use nuclear power, but it's to boil water to create steam to run these giant uh, 
aircraft carriers around the world and launch the aircraft and all this off boiling water. It's incredible power. Do we allow ourselves to turn the heat up so high, worrying about those issues, or are we going to be more focused on receiving the love of God as God has intended for us? We'll receive that sense of that love and that grace that we're going to have, not to be so focused on the hot issues. So hopefully, even though we read this text, hopefully there's some seeds here that you're able to grasp and get a hold of because Jesus really boils it down for us to get the right point. It's not all this other difficulty, but it's about being open, being receiving, to being with God, and being truly part of that kingdom. Mark, I refer to being indignant and in translation of the harsh Greek word. Let me also suggest to you today that part of this message brings us to really where the heart of God is and the presence of Jesus Christ in our life. Today is World Communion Sunday. Today we share Holy Communion with all people around the world that have have our Christian faith. Communion will be shared where the juice takes all different forms, some fermented, some not, as we have uh, here, the unfermented versions. And the bread will have all different shapes and flavors in the bread. Is it one bread only, one wine only that's acceptable, or is it the relationship that when the connection that we seek to make, are we coming part of the kingdom of God through our relationship and receiving of of God's love. The meal that we share through Holy Communion is not for us alone. It's for all that are here. It's a ritual performed in these multiple languages, in multiple colors, in multiple ways. We do this in a world that is filled with war and anger and division and diversity. So I wonder, and here's a question for you, is communion primarily something that is spiritual or is it physical? Maybe it's a little bit both. Sure, we have bread and juice, but it is truly the grace of God and the remembrance of Christ's sacrifice and Christ's gift of salvation that we take in that spirit of Holy Communion. Our task, yours and mine, through Holy Communion is not just to walk through the ritual, not just to consume the bread and drink the juice. Our mission, our purpose, is to invite the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, into us, to engage in understanding and opening our faith, making it real in our time, in this time. As Christ would use words such as seeds and pearls and light and darkness to help us connect to our own world Holy Communion helps us connect our world back together with Christ. We seek to be in that moment in time in a relationship spiritual and powerful, filled with forgiveness, filled with grace, knowing of God's love that we connect with in that moment in time. Some often worry about doing communion on a frequent basis because somehow it will become a habit. And that's our task. Our task is that each time that we are able to engage in Holy Communion is that we engage with the Holy Spirit in our lives, seeking forgiveness, giving praise for the God's many blessings, looking for and asking for hope and assurance and comfort through that relationship. 
A few years ago, I read a story about a fire in, in a hotel in Chicago. The flames had gotten very high and smoke was black and, and it was blocking out most of the normal escape routes. A number of people that were gathered on a 10th floor got to a room that had a balcony and they were crowding out onto that balcony. The heat was coming in and pressing and the smoke was incredible. No way could they drop 10 flights of stairs. No way could they crawl up to a higher place. No way did they know how to get out or how to escape. One young man decided he wasn't going to just stand there and die. He was going to do something. And he broke his way through the room and out into the hallway, covering himself with, and finding a way to try to reduce the smoke. And he eventually found a stairway and moved a uh, distance to realize that he encountered other people. And so instead of just continuing to take himself out of and into a safe location, he turns back. He returns to that room where all those people were, were gathered out on that patio, on that porch, and he says, come, follow me. Cover your faces, but follow me. I know the way. Brothers and sisters, this is truly the message of our text today. This is truly the Christian message. God sent his only son that in spite of the heat and the, the horrors of the world that we are in, the struggles that we may face, that we can trust and know to follow him, to receive his love and grace, to take us into safe places place that we can move courageously, not just ourselves, but those that we encounter around us. And so here on this Sunday, as we think about our, our gospel message this morning, all of you are invited to a traditional, classic family gathering and reunion as we share in Holy Communion. We share together, we share and as we look into each other's eyes and faces that we can see the family resemblance, we see and experience the spirit and the presence of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit as we ourselves learn and remember the value that he has placed in us and are willing follow his love and his ways to take us back to the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us prepare to respond to the word today by the sharing of Holy Communion. Please turn to page 12. repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, and we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. We'll turn to page 13 in the hymnal also on the screen, as we continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made us one, made us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On that night when Jesus and his disciples had gathered together in that upper room, Jesus takes the loaf of bread. He gives thanks to God and he breaks the bread. And he passes it to his disciples and Ted says, take, eat from this, all of you. This is my body is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as the meal draws towards conclusion, Jesus takes the cup of wine for us Jews. And he takes the cup and he gives thanks to God and he gives it to his disciples and he says, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is given. Christ is Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. In this United Methodist Church, we believe that this is Christ's table. Christ has provided the elements and Christ extends the invitation. As you come forward this morning, please line up along the altar aisle. On the altar rail, you may stand or kneel as you are able. And you will be brought and uh, put your hands in the form of a cross. And the communion steward will place a, place a piece of bread in your hand and remind you that this is Christ's body broken for you. And you'll be offered a cup and reminded that this is Christ's blood poured out, that you may be filled with that Holy Spirit. You're invited to remain at the altar rail in prayer as long as you are. Please come. The table is set.
but as prepare to share in our closing remarks. Uh, um, we have just a, uh, I think just a reminder of the things that were shared this morning. Be sure to check the calendar uh, in the church and uh, again sign up for times and opportunities as we continue to invite children this week into our pumpkin patch for stories and, and uh, times to connect and relate with one another. Um, so a perfect time and again I'm so proud to be part and serving this church has continued to move in so many ways this year um, and uh, look forward to many many more times. We're on to a, we're almost starting up for me anyway almost a, to a one year anniversary of being here getting pretty close so with that let us stand and share together in our closing prayer. In, your, when it, uh, in the bulletin and on the screen. Eternal God, before whom our human systems and distinctions amount to nothing, and in whose love the last are often first, grant teachings that, we will, that will astound us, your presence to transform us, and courage to witness with all we have, and all that we are to do the good news of your love and the promise of eternal life. Amen. Our closing hymn today is I Love to Tell the Story, number 156. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story because I know it is true it satisfies my longings as nothing else can do I love to tell the story Tell the story, more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story, it did so much for me, and that is just the reason. I tell it now to thee, I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, it is pleasant to
to tell the story.